Okay, this is, um, I think, class, uh, the second class of the Hummingbird Part 2. And um, I'm not sure if I said we were going to do it in mar uh, in paint, uh, watercolor paint or not. I think I'm going to do the, the um, Hummingbird in, um, let me see, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to do the Hummingbird in marker. And then I'm gonna do the background in color um, pa chalk pastel. And so, um, so what we're gonna be doing is coloring in our hummingbirds. And you can see a couple of um, examples that I have here, um, which is also done in kind of a light, medium, and dark green. You see um, after we're done with the with the marker, we're gonna apply some glitter glue on. I've got this uh, really pretty opalescent um, that's kind of sheer. And then we'll do a little bit of shading on the um, hummingbird with our mar with our colored markers. And I have some color pencils that I'm going to be adding a little bit to my flower and my leaf. So I did do the flower in watercolor. And um, it's fine, I'm, uh, we're gonna try the chalk pastel for the background. And this has chalk pastel in the background as you can see. And then this one also has um, chalk pastel for the background. So I'm gonna show you the technique when we do that. So what we're gonna need are some markers and I've, I've pulled a range of colored markers and like I mentioned that there are a number of different species of hummingbirds um, that I think there are 150 species of hummingbirds that are out um, and about so throughout the world. And so um, they're just all different color varieties that you'll, that you'll notice. So we're going to be doing, um, oh, and here's one more uh, example. Now this one doesn't have much shading at all. It's just got the first initial color on it and it hasn't been shaded. So we're gonna use light, medium, and dark of the um, marker colors. And so we're going to start, I'm going to do kind of a, a yellow. I have this here. I'm going to show you guys. Let me move this up. Okay. And um, we're going to do the chest area in a light yellow marker. Now you may want to have a test sheet to test the color first before you um, start to color it in. And then I'm just going to do very light coloration. Like I said, there are so many different species. You may have different colorations than mine does, and that's okay. Um, but this just gives you an idea. Hold on one second. And so you want to always start off on um, the hummingbird in a much lighter color so that you can do the shading and the darker shade um, of the same color family. So I'm just going to color this in and stay within the lines. And I'm going to go beyond the wing and take that down to the stomach area. Okay, now for the, there. so I'm going to cap that and then I'm going to find a much lighter green that I'm going to add to the area above the yellow that I just used. And when you're coloring in, keep all the areas colored in, no white patches should be seen or left. Okay. 
careful going around the eye. This can be done in color pencil. It can be done in watercolor, but I wanted more of um, um, kind of a brighter color and with markers the color can definitely stand out a little bit more. Plus if I'm going to add glitter, it will go on watercolor, but I, I think it'll be a little easier um, on the marker. So as you can see, I'm going all the way to the tip of this section on the back, the, the top part of the back feathers that I have for the tail. And then I'm just going to find like a lighter blue for this part. And I'm kind of fluttering my marker around the edge so it gives it the feathery kind of look to it. So it's not completely straight, a straight curve line. lighter color on the feathers of his wing. all the pencil lines I see a little bit right on the edge of these feathers so I want to just clean that up so I won't see it once it's completed fuchsia to the neck feathers. And I'm going to use a black Sharpie just to kind of just outline that fuchsia marking on the neck. some patchy dots just above the beak. And then I'm going to do the beak like a very light, yeah, a light gray. Now I can go over that light green with a slightly darker kind of bluish, let's see, is there a darker green? There's a little bit of a darker green. I can add some little lines, little dash lines for some feathering details.
even go with kind of a, a bluish gray color. And you can see you need that lighter Uh, green first in order to add this slightly darker color over it. You could even go in with some darker blue, but I think it's got enough um, range to it. So now I'm going to go um, <clears throat> over the yellow on the under part of his body. And I'm just making some very short dashed lines to create a nice feathery, feathered look. I'm gonna have some kind of long to shorter dashed lines. Kind of a nice range. And then maybe take that underneath the wing. And then just leave for other areas to um, show through. And then on the tail feathers, I'm going to go in with a slightly darker color, like a purple. darker color to the tips of the wings if you want. Give them some nice range. forget to make sure that when you do um, finish with your marker, I'm just going to go back over with my yellow and soften those lines a little bit. As you can see, they're nice juicy markers and they definitely kind of, the alcohol kind of dissipates over the line and softens it. So it looks a lot more natural. darker blue along the top part of the feathers. And you can also go back over that Again, with your lighter blue and soften those lines. As you can see, it kind of bleeds out just ever so slightly. And this was the lighter blue I used when I first colored in the, the wings. Take that and go over the under part. You can definitely go over 
your first two colors that you've used. And if you wanted to lighten it up again, you could just definitely go over um, with a color pencil that would show up. So I just wanted to use a slightly darker gray right along that line to show the separation of the beak, the top and bottom beak. Let's create a little bit of a shadow in that too. Okay, so now that um, I think the, if you wanted to add any more to the rest of your hummingbird, you could maybe add a little bit more color. I can go over some of these, make it multicolored. Adding the blue on the light green has a very soft color. Layering of the colors is nice too. You may want to practice doing it first. Then when you're finished, um, you'll use some of the glitter with the tip of your finger on part of your uh, hummingbird. Now the thing I don't recommend is adding the glitter to all of it, maybe just parts of it. You don't want to overdo the whole glitter thing with your, um, with your picture. the hummingbird. Now um, I'm going to use a small palette. I think there's 12 pastels in this as you can see and you're going to need a couple of cotton balls. You can use a little bit of a paper towel and you're going to need a scrap piece of paper. I'll show you what you're going to be doing. All right, so with your background, I want to achieve something like this background. As you can see, um, the flowers are kind of a nice range of different pinks, but the background are the flowers, but more muted into each other, kind of blended in, and it's not focused. It's an unfocused background. So I don't have all those colors in my palette. So, um, you know, to make pink, I could use my red. I don't have white in this assortment here, so I'm just going to use a little blue. And I'm not going to cover each one up. I just want to have like a purple. So when you combine blue and red, you get your purple. And then, oh my gosh, I don't even have green. Hmm. What am I going to do here? What to do? What to do? Well, I could use color pencil if I wanted to do that. Or I could just decide, well, no, let's just do this because I don't have green. Um, but I can make green. So I will make green by using yellow and my blue. And you see I'm just adding a little bit of blue right to the end of my yellow and I've got green. So it's not gonna look exactly like the background, that's fine. And then I'm gonna take my cotton ball and I'm gonna rub it and go rub it in between the yellow and 
the blue and you can see I've got kind of a nice range um, for my background. You can do your background in any color you want, but I wouldn't make it too busy and I'll tell you why, because you have a lot of color in your hummingbird. Now you can kind of just move your cotton ball around and color in your background. I almost kind of like it just like this with the yellow, the green, and the blue. And you want to kind of be careful around the edges of your, of your picture. And you can kind of use a Q-tip if you've got a Q-tip laying around or kind of make your cotton ball a little bit more like a point. And then you can color in over those white parts to your to your hummingbird. And basically I keep scooping up the dust, the chalk dust, and using that cotton ball to color in my background. And I think this works, it's pretty subtle. And the colors look good. Okay, and then just finish up the rest of your white background with your chakra still. And you might have to mix up the yellow and the blue one more time to finish up your background if it starts to run out. And if you wanted to use a color pencil, maybe a white, and kind of work in a little bit of white along some of those lines that I've made in my flower to have a tiny bit more detail since we've made our hummingbirds so detailed. And you can go back in your leaf too with a darker green, maybe along this part and along the outside. Just kind of shading it ever so softly. Okay. All right, so that, and then you can add a little bit to your blossoms. So that concludes our hummingbird project. All right, take care, I'll see you soon.